everybody. Welcome to Women in Crypto, where we discover the trailblazers in the future of money, markets, and payments, and find out how we're going to incorporate all this wonderful technology into our future. Today, we have a wonderful guest with us, Lisa Loud. She is a co-founder of Your Foundation, which is the Internet of Universal Resources. And I'm really happy to have Lisa with us today. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Hi, Lori. Hi. Nice to be here. Well, congratulations being one of the top 100 women in cryptocurrency and all the work that you're doing in the space. And we're really glad to have you here today to tell us a little bit about what you're up to lately, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of exciting stuff going on in the industry right now. And I do want to talk about your foundation because it's uh, one of the most exciting projects that I've seen in the space. But um, in general, what I'm finding is that uh, we're seeing an, an evolution of the technology of blockchain. You know, I, I like to compare it to electricity. Uh, electricity was invented, but it wasn't useful for anything yet until refrigerators were invented, until light bulbs were invented. So we see that often that a technology comes out and everything is, is set to change the world, but the actual applications have not been designed to take advantage of that technology. And we see that with blockchain. For a few years now, we've seen a lot of people talking about blockchain um, and trying to build companies around it, trying to integrate it into their current offerings. But we haven't seen a lot of practical applications that really do change the world. So I believe we're kind of at the tipping point now. We're seeing technology come forward to solve problems, um, just like electricity came forward to solve the problems of uh, keeping food safe and keeping our, our living spaces light later into the night, which really had widespread effects, right? We could now work at our own hours instead of sleeping when it was dark. So at this, in the same way, I think blockchain is, is modifying our world in terms of um, the control of resources. In, in general, we've seen the large companies, and we call them GAFAM, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple and Microsoft, we've seen those large companies control a lot of the resources that we that we use day to day. The internet, in fact, is controlled by those large companies. They own most of the resources that most of the serving power, server power, and most of the processing power is controlled by those companies. Yeah. So, but the, the whole idea of blockchain really is how do we take power out of a centralized company like Google and distribute it for the for the people. Same with currency, cryptocurrency, you know, Bitcoin, the whole idea of Bitcoin is instead of having centralized government currencies, now we're going to have a distributed currency that's peer to peer that I can send you money, you can send me money and it doesn't have to go through a third party. In the same way, yeah, in the same way, um, we'd let your is actually your your internet is is the idea of creating a new internet where um, we promote we promote the development and adoption of new protocols that enhance the fundamental properties of the internet, but it also allows everybody to participate in that internet. So that if let's say Google were to be wiped out by by a, a meteor <laughs> tomorrow, instead of having seventy percent of our server capacity go offline it would be distributed among millions of people and not one person would control a large part of that. Wow. So the internet would barely even feel it mm -hmm. if one person disappeared from that or one entity disappeared from that. Wow, so, so let me back up a little bit. Sounds like you guys are doing a lot of great things over there. Uh, so uh, I know uh, you had mentioned the top companies uh, and you had a uh, acronym for Google, Apple, Microsoft. Can you say that acronym again? GAFAM. GAFAM. Well, and we know that as centralized internet, right? Yes. So, so what you're doing is creating resources to decentralize the internet through blockchain. Yeah. 
And even more than that, we also want to, we are also creating the protocol, so a set of standards. You know, IEEE set up the standards for, the, for an entire industry. Well, the internet doesn't have those standards yet, doesn't have a foundation that, that really provides the standards that everyone adheres to. So your internet, is, is our main goal is to create those standards. Right now, for example, uh, security is not built into TCP IP. And so there's layers on top of layers in, TCP, in the internet, layers on top of TCP IP that will provide the security, that will provide the additional features that we consider essential now, now that we have had the internet for um, however many decades we've had it. Yeah, yeah. Now let me stop you there because there's a lot of people that are listening right now and hearing women and technology. And so we're, we've heard of TCP IP, but how can you relate that to somebody who might not know what that is? Yeah, that's a great question because in the early days of the internet, most people did know what TCP IP is even peripherally. If they didn't understand it, they knew that it was part of what ran the internet. And uh, that was necessary because it was so new. The internet was new. So in the early stages of a technology, everybody talks about the actual technology. Now, we don't talk about it because we have our internet. We have, you know, we have the, the Google and we ask her for everything. Yeah, Windows, <laughs> so, yeah. We don't, exactly. we don't need to go ahead and enter in code anymore. Right. So <laughs> we don't know about how it works. And in the same way, um, these days, blockchain is very similar. We all talk about blockchain, but do we really need to understand what it does? Not really. What we need to know is the, the idea of distributed resources, the, the idea that we are all part of this thing and we're building it together as a people, not as not as a um, as a centralized government. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, and so that should help a lot of people. Take, you know, one of the reasons why people don't get involved in technology or they don't want to get involved in cryptocurrency is they say they just don't understand it. Right. So yeah. do they need to understand it? They don't need to understand it. And you touch on a really, a very, dear to my heart point, because um, one of the reasons that cryptocurrency and blockchain, well, Bitcoin, let's just say Bitcoin, has not reached full adoption at this point in, our, in, in the technology's evolution is that it seems very complicated. And the only way that Bitcoin is really going to be useful and blockchain is really going to be useful is if we get better adoption, more adoption. So really, I feel like the industry's thrust at this point is to simplify Bitcoin, simplify blockchain, and make it accessible to more people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so uh, you've worked for exchanges, uh, you've worked for Apple, you've worked for Oracle and PayPal. Uh, mm -hmm. So do you have any recommendations how this can be simplified for people? Yeah, um, one of the lessons that the tech companies have learned is you need to build customer-centric products. Um, Apple is probably the best example of how things are built to appeal to people and to be, to be delightful. Like Apple's products typically have been, historically have been very delightful. So in the crypto industry, by contrast, we have built, uh, I worked at BitMEX and BitMEX introduced the first, the world's first cryptocurrency derivatives, but they were super complicated. And in order to trade on BitMEX, you really had to understand trading, you had to understand math, you had to understand statistics. It was very complicated. And so a small set of people was trading a lot. You know, they traded a lot, so it was very good for the company, but it wasn't a large customer base. And in crypto company, cryptocurrency companies, like for example, Shapeshift, um, as COO of Shapeshift, we, we saw that our company culture was very much 
centered around around the cryptocurrency enthusiast and those people have a slightly different you know slightly anarchistic bent slightly just like we're different but we never appealed to the mass um, user to the the regular user who didn't have any of those skills who wasn't a cryptocurrency person and so we pivoted earlier this year to create an experience that was designed to help cryptocurrency enthusiasts share crypto with people who didn't understand it that's where i think we are we need to copy the large tech giants yeah to create products that actually meet people's needs and that are easy easy to use and that are delightful so we're seeing now uh, a lot of companies jump on that bandwagon trying to make a crypto experience that's very easy to get into very simple to use coinbase of course is the poster child for um, the that's where everyone gets sent if you want to get into crypto and you don't know very much everyone will send you to coinbase and Coinbase is not that easy, honestly. It's just the easiest that's out there, right? Yeah, it is, right? And so have to go through, jump through hoops to get on board. Yeah, and so for our listeners, Coinbase is a another exchange that you can go set up your first cryptocurrency account. Usually, it's where people go for the first time, right? Yeah. Um, wow. Nice. So, so bit. Uh, it was Bitmex then. Uh, it's kind of clunky, it's kind of difficult, just like the internet was when it first started. And so how is it that your organization or your foundation will um, help with decentralizing the internet? Yeah, so the hope is that we won't need to talk about a new standard for TCP IP in five or 10 years. It'll just be, it'll be the new internet um, and you know, People have talked about Web 3.0. I have run into at least a dozen completely separate definitions for Web 3.0. So I don't like to say Web 3.0 or Web 4.0. Um, I think we just need to talk about the new internet. The yeah. new internet will have everything built in. So all of the security protocol, you don't need to learn, you don't need to learn several different layers in order to make your site secure. Right, right now we have SSL certificates, uh, you know, a lot of jargon that I, I don't want to get too super confusing, but in order to create a website, you have to know so many things right now. You have to understand how you're going to keep spam from happening, um, how you're going to have, avoid denial of service attacks, um, avoid people stealing from your website security. Um, there's just too much. It, it's not it's not practical for the future so your foundation will create a, a new layer on I'm in New York so sirens are a part of life I'll just let you know oh. <laughs> if you hear the sirens in the background it's normal yeah so what we want is to create a protocol that will allow people to have all of that wrapped up together it's not going to be difficult to figure out your security because it's just part of the protocol um, you just check a box and say, yeah, I want it to be secure. So that's, that's the idea. Not only will it be distributed and uh, true to the blockchain ethos of, of decentralized um, processing applications, decentralized operations, it will also be super simple to use and only a few experts will need to know how it actually works um, and the rest will just use it. Yeah, yeah. So like, how many of us know that there's a vacuum inside of a light bulb. I mean, probably a lot of people, but not everyone needs to know that. It doesn't help. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. And just like everybody has a, a smartphone, but not everybody knows all the functions of the smartphone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about how you got started in blockchain, Lisa. I was, I had worked at a lot of large corporations. Um, at Apple and uh, at most recent, most lately PayPal. Um, and when cryptocurrency came around, it's a funny story actually, my, um, my friend gave me this heater. He said it was a heater. So he said, here, put this in your house. 
it'll heat up your rooms. So I did, and, and <laughs> turned out it was actually a Bitcoin miner. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, well, that's a good friend, isn't it? <laughs> he gave off a lot. Of, no, no, he kept the Bitcoin. Oh, I got the heat. <laughs> <laughs> because at that point it wasn't worth the electricity to mine Bitcoin, right? But if I was going to heat my house, you know, it was now worth it. Sure. So, <laughs> wow. I think he owes me at least at least half of that, though. But anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, I didn't really know much about Bitcoin. I think it was in 2013 when he did that. But over the years, my husband uh, said, you know, you love math, you love trading, you should look at Bitcoin. So I finally did in 2016, really get into it. And then once I saw that and PayPal, the reason I love PayPal was it was such an innovative company. It changed the world for people. Um, I saw that Bitcoin had the potential to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring that to PayPal. But PayPal wasn't ready at that point. It wasn't an innovative phase in 2016. Uh, we were more in the phase of becoming more respected, you know, moving to New York, becoming a financial institution, being compliant. And so um, eventually I said, all right, well, I'm going to make the leap. And I'll tell you, it was one of the scariest things I ever did, yeah. leaving the the comfort and relative security of a large corporate job. You know, we had lunches every day. <laughs> How can you leave that? <laughs> to jump into this tiny little company called BitMEX that was um, doing something completely innovative and maybe legal, maybe not, it wasn't sure. Um, and I, I went to BitMEX. No one there had any experience in corporations. So I was really it for setting up company process and figuring out how how this little startup should really run long term and it should grow. And it was very uh, it was very interesting. I'll say that 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 year was one of my harder years because I didn't have any of the support that I was used to. I didn't have you know my my agencies to do all the creative and. Um, to do all of the, the fine tuning of Google AdWords, you know, it was right. all on me. Right. So um, that was an interesting adventure. And, but, you know, I got hooked because after BitMEX, I stayed in the crypto industry. I've been there. I've been in crypto for three years now. And one thing I like to say to women who are in technology, it's really tough in technology or in finance to rise um, within the industry because there are so many people already there who who have their their stake have their little mountain um, when you move into crypto it's scary I'll tell you that it's it's a very uncertain industry things change so fast and the companies come and go very quickly but as a woman I found it one of the most useful um, career moves that I've made because I can rise much more quickly in crypto because there aren't as many um, there aren't as many incumbents who really know the industry. Um, so it's an opportunity. It's a scary. It's taking a risk, but with risk comes reward. So I do recommend to women who are ambitious to jump into crypto because you can you can make your career move quite a bit faster if you don't have as much opposition from people who don't want you to, to move too fast. Well, and that's what I'm finding uh, when we look at the cryptocurrency industries. Um, uh, we all think that, you know, cryptocurrency, oh, that's a guy, you know, or Bitcoin, you know, and programming technology in general is for men. But uh, through the process of interviewing so many wonderful forward thinking women, we get blockchain technology because it, it's applicable. It's applicable technology. And so, um, so that's really good advice you're giving everybody with, uh, or, or with women wanting to get in technology. Um, so where do you think, uh, just to further that along, where do you think that women should, who want to get into crypto can start? A good place to start is um, trading crypto because in order to trade any crypto, there's so many things you have to learn. You have to learn um, how to make a Bitcoin transaction, um, what a private key is, how to make a wallet, 
etc. And then you have to understand how Bitcoin is is uh, how how it trades. I'm not. I don't believe that trading is the future of cryptocurrency or blockchain, but it is the present. And so, it's a very good way for you to get a, a 101 education in cryptocurrency is just to start trading somewhere, even with fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. It can be a small amount, but you'll learn so much just to get to that point to be able to trade something. Um, at this point, I've done a lot of recruiting and hiring at the various companies that I've been at. It's so difficult to find people who have real experience in business along with crypto experience. You'll find business people who want to get into crypto and you'll find crypto enthusiasts who've never been in a, a, a company larger than 100 people. So finding the crossover, it's very rare skills to find together. And so I would strongly recommend anyone with uh, any woman who has some business experience and wants to get into crypto, first trade, that's, that's 101. But then get, get a job at a crypto company, even if it's a volunteer job or a part-time job, because if you have that experience of knowing how crypto companies run, they are different, <laughs> they're a little insane, but they're, they're different, um, you'll be very desirable in, in the job market and you'll be able to get a, a very advantageous position and role that allows you to move forward quickly. Yeah, yeah, well, very good, good advice. Uh, so here's a general question, since you're a, a woman and from math and technology background, uh, why do you think women stay away from technology or just shy away from it? There's such a low percentage. I, I think, you know, I have daughters now, so um, I was raised by, my father's a math teacher, so I was raised with you know, math problems from the time I could talk. <laughs> so <laughs> technology never really scared me. I never saw myself as a woman in technology. I mostly saw myself as just a technology person, a science person. Um, but I think that I've seen, now that I have daughters, I've seen a lot of the um, cultural um, implications or impacts where boys are just pushed more into that area and girls are pushed away from it. It seems to be a cultural thing. It's something we have to change. There's organizations like Girls Who Code, because what I find is that when women start to learn how to code, maybe math is, is, a, is a big step, right? Because math is so numbers and boring. But if women start to learn to code, they realize it's a language. And one thing we're very good at as, as, as women is communication. So if you start to see coding and, and computers as a way of, of communicating in a different language, then it becomes much more interesting and uh, relatable. Right. So I think that's a good place to start. These, these organizations like Girls Who Code, I really like to support them because they make a huge difference in how women see themselves. Well, that's a great organization that you mentioned. Uh, women who code, women who like to code. Girls who code. Girls they, who code. All right, they, there we go. And, and All right. Well, good, Mel. I, I hope that uh, we get our listeners to, to find out more about that organization as well. Wow, so do you have anything else or any offer or anything you'd like to share with our listeners before we, we end this great interview here? Sure, uh, I have two things. One is that um, the fourth floor in New York has done an amazing job at um, creating an, a community for women in technology, women entrepreneurs, women lawyers, um, to come together and create a network. And one of the things they are doing is helping women get board seats in public companies. So I encourage our listeners to check out the fourth floor in New York and take one of their classes because we need more women in, on boards. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is please check out your.org, I-O-U-R.org. Um, it's very new, but it is, is something that we all can be passionate about and we want more and more people to join our foundation as members. So please check it out. We don't have, it's not formal yet, um, but we do have a website and things will be coming soon. We're creating a white paper 
that should be ready in a month or two. So check out IOUR.org. It's your internet instead of Google's internet. That's great. I really like that concept. What a good job. Good name too, huh? <laughs> well, thank you, Lisa, for joining us today on the show. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we're so glad to have Lisa with us today. And um, it's been a pleasure. And uh, well, likewise, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Lori. Well, thank you so much for your time. And everybody, tune in. We've got more. And I hope you enjoyed today's show. So we'll be signing off for now. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.